C's dad had already voted that day too. So don't tell me there is not voter fraud. And even a small percentage, as they said, it's not widespread. We just had a House election that the person won by six votes. A small spread of voter fraud makes a difference. So I am totally against this. I will fight it every single day. We need to have confidence that our vote counts, that there's one person for one vote. Thank you for this press conference because this message needs to be heard. The American people know what they want. They want elections that are fair and free from fraud. That's what, that's what people want. And when I see what the Democrats are proposing that's come over from the House, to me that is radical, extreme, dangerous, and, and I find it quite scary. We have proposed legislation, the, the Save Democracy Act, which I think actually works much, much better because it includes voter registration. The Democrats say you don't have to register to vote. People should register to vote. It's a privilege to vote and an opportunity that we all have. When I take a look at what we've done with, say, mail-in balloting, it works in Wyoming. We do it because people who are registered to vote, they request a ballot, they get it in the mail, they mail it back. It works. It has worked for many, many years. Democrats don't do it that way. They want to just send out ballots all over the place to people who may not be registered, in the, may not even know they're registered. That's because the Democrats in their bill do automatic registration. If you sign up for Medicaid, you'd be registered to vote. If you sign up for Obamacare, you're registered to vote. If you sign up for unemployment benefits, you would be under the Democrats' bill, be registered to vote. I think people should actually go and register to vote. Now, look, the Constitution says that the states ought to run our elections. That's how we've done it up until now. The Democrats' bill takes it away from the states, brings it to the federal government, Nancy Pelosi is essentially saying, and Chuck Schumer is saying, we are smarter than you. The Democrats, under their leadership, say, we know what works best. We don't want your states to be able to decide. We, from Washington, they say, are going to dictate the way you run your elections. And then finally, of course, this would be taxpayer-funded, because there would be a six-to-one match. If you collect and are able to raise $100, you would get $600 from the federal government as a candidate. That's not right. Taxpayers don't want to pay to buy campaign balloons and buttons and pay for attack ads. Candidates ought to have to go and raise the money themselves. And that's why many people are calling it the Corrupt Politicians Act. Uh, I'm opposed to what the Democrats are promoting. In addition, uh, the Democrats' uh, bill would provide that Congress will do the redistricting, not the states. Now think about that. How many congressmen have been to uh, Nevada, Iowa, Nebraska? Are they going to allow Nebraska to continue to apportion their electoral votes or not? Two states do that, Maine and Nebraska. Is that going to be allowed? When you take states' rights away from states and give them to people in Congress who have partisan motives, who have regional motives, and who don't even think about aligning congressional districts with counties, cities, uh, and pursuing voting rights laws in a way that rationalize it, comparing it to school districts or conservation districts, the other voting opportunities that people have in their cities, towns, counties, and states. You're t making a system of one-size-fits-all, and under the Democrats' bill, that one-size-fits-all is the size that fits Democrats and gets Democrats elected. And if you look at this bill and the people who are not supporting the Democrats' bill, it crosses racial lines because people of all races who are Americans want to know the person who is voting is an American citizen, that they are who they say they are, they're only voting once, and they have a right to vote in that district. States are the ones who can ensure that those provisions are enacted. If we allow the Democrats' election bill to pass, it will fundamentally not only change elections over time, but it'll create chaos in 2022.
Roger Wicker from Mississippi. Uh, I want to thank uh, our friends from the press for showing up today. Um, I, I, uh, I appreciate a free media in the United States. I, I uh, defend the First Amendment. But I have to tell you that the mainstream media's coverage of S-1 has been so frustrating. Uh, I, I turn on the TV and they say, today the Senate will have a hearing on legislation S-1 to make it easier for Americans to vote. Well, who, who could be against uh, a bill to make it easier to vote? But when we get into the details of this legislation, S-1, and you go one by one and ask the American people, do they agree or disagree, then they begin to understand what's wrong with this bill. I have, uh, I got my driver's license here. I don't know how many times I've had to show this driver's license this week. I went to the doctor to get a shot. I had to show my ID. I, I flew from Washington, D.C., uh, flew from Mississippi up to Washington, D.C. I have to show my ID. I've, I've, I've shown it dozens of times. You ask the American people, should we have a, should states have a right, should states have a right to ask for ID to show that the person voting is indeed who they say they are? The American people are overwhelmingly in favor of that. Uh, ballot harvesting, nobody knows what ballot harvesting is. That sounds like something gentle and, and nutritious. Ballot harvesting is a, allowing an individual, oftentimes a paid operative of one party or the other, to go out and collect ballots door to door, and they could even say, I'm here to collect Democratic ballots. I'll bring them in for you. Uh, you ask the American people what they think about that, what they think about one person having uh, control of so many ballots with all the fraud that can happen there, and the American people are overwhelmingly against ballot harvesting when, when they're told what it is. So uh, we're having a hearing today uh, going chapter and verse about what this bill actually does and what it actually doesn't do. And if we can get that message out to the American people, they, I think, will be back to us as members of the Senate and say, reject this bill. Uh, let states on an, on an individual basis sort out the kind of voter fraud protections that we need. And when we do that, I think this bill will go down. Mike Braun from Indiana, a place that I think we could take a lead from. It's a conservative state in the Midwest. You've got 10 different reasons to select a paper ballot. You've got all kinds of time to vote early. And most importantly, not only constitutionally is this a state prerogative, but we ought to learn from the laboratory of states. We have 50 different states. The Constitution says to keep it there. We ought to find that sweet spot that really works. The other thing we need to be aware of, with a lot of the agenda that's coming forward, this will probably be the test of the filibuster as well. In my mind, for this to get through, for all the reasons it shouldn't, you'll have to push the envelope on that issue. And I'm not going to repeat what others have said when it comes to the details of what's bad about this bill, but it basically gets down to what the Constitution says is right, follow the lead, end up with the best practices, and here's a doozy that's part of it too. If there is a dispute, it takes it from a state jurisdiction and moves it to the District of Columbia. How do you think that would work in terms of people being confident that you'd ever adjudicate something in a way that would be fair? I've seen a few uh, monstrous bills in my time in the United States Senate and the House. This is one of the worst bills that I've seen. Uh, that has a chance of becoming law. And uh, I appreciate my colleague's strong opposition to this legislation, and we must rally the American people. And uh, it also may become the circumstance in which, as uh, was indicated, the filibuster rule is set aside. Uh, it would be terrible 
terrible for the United States of America and our citizens for the filibuster, the 60-vote rule, to be uh, eliminated. It protects the minorities, and it brings people together in a necessity to get legislation passed with 60 votes. Do not use this monstrosity of a bill to further erode the power of United States senators and their ability to represent the American people. Do not use this bill to further erode the ability of Republicans and Democrats, the necessity of us working together to get 60 votes. And again, this legislation, it is a monstrosity because it takes something that is important and valuable to Kansans and transfers the authority, the right to vote, the ability to vote, the, the sanctity of our elections, transfers that authority to the nation's capital. The Constitution says it belongs with the states. I've been in every courthouse in Kansas. I've been in about every Secretary of State's office since I've been an adult, uh, the, the state election officer. I have visited with county clerks, and I've been in election uh, in county clerks' offices where they're counting votes on election night. Kansas has figured out how to have pretty secure and integrity in its elections. Uh, we have a lot of faith in our state Secretary of State and in our county elected officials. The, the, the burden to have a safe and a fair election rests with them. And we have uh, passed legislation. We, uh, in, we require voter ID. It's just common sense. I don't want to distract or destroy anybody's right to vote that is legally entitled to, entitled to vote, but ID allows us to make sure that that person is legally entitled to vote. Uh, this is a serious issue for the American people. It's a serious issue for the future of the United States Senate and very damning to democracy in our republic should it become law. Thank you. I just came from uh, the Rules Committee hearing. And what was evident to me was that a lot of good things are happening with elections in this country. You know, in the state of Nebraska, in the 2020 election, we saw 960,000 people vote out of 1.2 million registered voters in the state of Nebraska. I heard that from my colleagues on my side of the aisle and on the other side of the aisle, talking about uh, how they had great turnouts in their elections. And the question that I asked the members of the Rules Committee was, why would any elected official, a state official, want to put the federal government in charge? Why would you want to put the federal government in charge after we're hearing all the success stories of this last election? We want to make sure that every citizen gets out and votes. That's the goal of everyone. Republicans, Democrats, that's what keeps our democracy strong. We want to make sure people get out and vote. But when you look at this bill and put aside all the, all the partisanship that's go, that goes on on it. But when you dig into this bill and what's in it, I mean, there's no way that I can support it. For example, if you look at uh, the, the paper voting machines and the requirement, which is conflicting in the bill, it's sloppily written, it's conflicting in the bill, how, do, how does a state election official adhere to that? How do you implement it? You know, discounting the fact that those machines don't even exist right now. But they're supposed to be in effect in 2020. You talk about chaos in an election. Put the federal government in charge with a reckless piece of legislation that, that can't even be implemented. 800 pages of confusion and chaos. States are doing a good job. That was pointed out over and over and over again in this hearing by Republicans and by Democrats. Why would we turn over our election system and threaten chaos in our democracy to the federal government? President Biden said on January the 20th he wanted to promote unity and heal divisions with his presidency. But this bill, if passed, would destroy bipartisan consensus building. It would eliminate the need for it in order to pass a purely partisan agenda. And it would disenfranchise 
the 49 percent of the voters and the public that are in the minority. That's what the consequences of this bill would be. And to what end? Well, we know that, uh, we know that there's folks on the uh, progressive or radical left that would like to turn D.C. into a state to get two more senators so that they would have a permanent partisan majority. There are those who said, well, we want to pack the Supreme Court with more justices. We want to make Puerto Rico a state, get them two senators too. Is this motivated by the desire to actually build consensus, heal our divisions, and promote unity? It's exactly the opposite. All this would do, again, is to install a permanent partisan majority. It would disenfranchise certainly the states and certainly the minority in this uh, country. And it would do the opposite of what President Biden said he wanted to do on January the 20th, which was to promote unity and heal the divisions in the country. I just came from the Rules Committee hearing on the Corrupt Politicians Act. This is the most dangerous legislation that's ever been considered by the Rules Committee. It is in the House, H.R. 1. It is in the Senate, S. 1. That means it's the very first bill that was submitted by Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats, the very first bill that was submitted by Chuck Schumer and the Democrats. It is their number one priority. Pause for a minute and reflect that the top priority of the Democrats is not COVID-19. It's not immunizations. It's not getting people back to work. It's not reopening schools and getting millions of kids back in the classroom. It is locking in power for the Democrats for the next 100 years. That is their overarching priority. How does it do this? The Corrupt Politicians Act mandates automatic voter registration whenever anyone has an interaction with the government, whether they have an interaction getting a welfare check, an unemployment check, whether they have a driver's license from the DNV, whether they attend a public university, everyone is registered. This bill is intended to and will register to vote millions of illegal aliens. That is exactly what the Democrats want to do with this bill, is register millions of illegal aliens. And the text of the bill acknowledges that, and it says the illegal aliens who are registered to vote, even though it's against the law for them to vote, they face no liability because they're automatically registered to vote. Not only that, this bill prevents the states from addressing that, from correcting the voter rolls, prevents the states from removing dead people from the voter rolls to facilitate voter fraud. Not only that, this bill mandates that criminals be allowed to vote, that all felons, many states have very reasonable laws that prohibit felons from voting. The Democrats repeal every one of those laws. They mandate that murderers, that rapists, that child molesters be allowed to vote. Now, the reason the Democrats do that is they've made the determination that if millions of illegal aliens and millions of criminals are allowed to vote, that those voters are going to vote for Democrats, and they're going to keep Democrats in power forever. Beyond that, this bill strikes down the election integrity laws at the state level across the board. Photo ID laws, voter identification laws. 29 states have voter identification laws. By the way, about 80 percent of Americans support voter identification laws. The Corrupt Politicians Act strikes every one of those down. Among the states that have voter identification laws are Georgia, Arizona, and West Virginia. All three of those states have Democratic senators in this body. Those Democratic senators are saying to their states they're willing to strike down the voter identification laws that were adopted in those states. This bill mandates ballot harvesting, paid operatives from the Democratic National Committee collecting votes, going to a nursing home, collecting hundreds of votes, potentially throwing out the votes they don't like. It is an invitation to corruption. You know, in 2005, the Carter-Baker Commission was chaired by Democratic President Jimmy Carter by Republican former Secretary of State James Baker concluded that ballot harvesting poses a serious risk of voter fraud. So what does the Corrupt Politicians Act do? It incorporates it. Beyond that, this bill is also welfare for politicians. It provides a six to one match, federal taxpayer dollars going to politicians to fund their campaigns, hundreds of millions of dollars of federal money going to fund campaigns. And you know what this bill also says? 
the corrupt politicians can pay themselves a salary from the money from the federal government while they're running for office. This bill is of the Democrats, by the Democrats, and for the Democrats. It is designed to keep them in power. And a final point, for 50 years, the Federal Election Commission has been bipartisan. Three Republicans, three Democrats. That has ensured some modicum of fairness. What does this bill do? It turns the Federal Election Commission into a partisan attack machine. Ask yourself right now, if Democrats have control of the Federal Election Commission, if Chuck Schumer is in charge of elections, you have Republican senators here, I can guarantee you every Republican senator is getting fined by the Chuck Schumer Federal Election Commission. Every Republican senator is getting sued by the Chuck Schumer Federal Election Commission. Every Republican senator is getting targeted. Why? This is not remotely an election integrity bill. This is a bill designed to steal your vote, to take it away and to give it to millions of illegal immigrants and criminals. And it is a fundamental threat to our democracy. Senator Cruz and so many others have talked about why this is a bad bill. Senator Moran called it an 800-page monstrosity, which again, I would agree with. I think the real story besides all of that is the fact that in the past Congress, Republicans leading the way in the Senate, Democrats having control in the House, were able to come together and pass $4 trillion worth of spending. In the Senate, we had very few dissenting votes, almost none. In the House also, very few dissenting votes. So far this year, we have a $1.9 trillion bill that not only did not attract a Republican vote, but it was nowhere close to it. I mean, nowhere close. You have to work to do that. Now we're faced with this 800-page bill that, again, not only do Republicans oppose it, they're nowhere close to coming to agreement. I talked to my uh, Secretary of State, John Thurston, Ask him about this bill. No one has approached him. Nobody that created this bothered to talk to any Secretary of State that I know of. He said that, and, and I would liken this to the chaos that we have on the border because of poor uh, administrative situations of guidance down there, to what he says, if we were to pass this tomorrow and put it in place, he felt like we would have chaos in our election system in 2022. So it's far-reaching. Again, we need to get ourselves in a situation where we're actually working on legislation and coming up with meaningful bills rather than these messaging things uh, to the far left. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, the, 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 the corrupt Politicians Act, Ted, that's great. The Corrupt Politicians Act, I like this. I want to start this morning by just talking about why most every American will dislike this bill. It uses taxpayer dollars to fund elections and campaigns. It uses taxpayer dollars to fund campaigns. That's going to result in more political attack ads. And when Americans find out they're going to have more political attack ads, their heads are going to explode. Next, I think what most every American thinks is not good in this bill is it dilutes your vote. It devalues your vote. I think about the sanctity of the election booth. When you walk in there and make your one vote, it counts as one vote, one person, one vote. Meanwhile, an operative is being paid for the last 30 to 60 days to go out and collect ballots, ballots that may have belonged to a dead person, to people that don't even live in the state yet. So when that person walks in with 30 ballots, 60 ballots, 100 ballots a day, it dilutes your value of your vote. What I'm for, I'm for election integrity. And I think in Kansas we have solid election integrity, and part of that is voter ID. And I think most every American thinks that voter ID adds to election integrity. I can't get a hotel room tonight, I can't rent a car tomorrow, I can't get in, in the halls of Congress without my ID, and I don't think it's too much to ask of a person to have an ID to vote. Not having an ID devalues your vote. As I think about this legislation, I think it's an unconstitutional power grab by Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer. It's an unconstitutional power grab. 
Look, just because you can grab power doesn't mean you have to. And actually one of the first tests of leadership is do you turn down power when you have opportunity to gain more? This legislation will end up with a one-party system. This is exactly what President Washington did not want, was a monarchy, a one-party system. And I believe Americans will remember this in 2022 and 2024. Thanks so much. Um, I want to join uh, all of my colleagues in stressing what the Democrats are trying to do with this legislation. They are trying to leverage a sliver of a majority in the House and an evenly divided Senate to lock in permanent and radical changes to the structure of our government. They want to change the rules of the Senate, change the traditions of the Senate to pass massively unpopular legislation that will help them never lose another election or that will help them pack our federal courts or pack our Senate. All these things are massively unpopular. You know, Americans have to show ID to get cough medicine at a pharmacy or get into a government building or get on an airplane. They believe they should have to show ID to vote. Things like same-day registration, again, radical ideas that would overturn almost every state's election law they want to foist upon our states. And they are doing this because they know the rest of their agenda is unpopular, trying to raise taxes and waste trillions of dollars of taxpayer money and to hold over the heads of Americans the loss of a job or loss of a spot in school or boycott of a business because they express opinions that are not consistent with progressive norms and fads and fashions. And I know there's a lot of talk about how the Senate is going to approach this legislation and will the Democrats have the votes to change the Senate rules? Will they require a talking filibuster? I join all of my colleagues in saying there is no amount of time that I will not dedicate on the Senate floor to stopping the Democrats from passing this kind of radical legislation. So I just want to say I'm shoulder to shoulder with all my colleagues here. I hope that on many of these issues addressing the country's problems, we can find a bipartisan compromise approach, which is what Senate rules have always been designed to do and that the role the Senate has always played in our country. Thank you. Great. Well, I think, I think it's clear we all want 100% participation, zero fraud. We want to make sure people feel comfortable about elections, and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that bad legislation does not pass to change our election system uh, and where the federal government can, makes all the decisions. So we, any of us can answer any questions anybody has. Can I ask, you, you offered the proposal of the Save Democracy Act as a, as a response to this S-1 bill. Um, do you have any Democrat support for that whatsoever? Well, it's not the first bill. I, I sponsored a bill last uh, last September to try to make sure we do mail-in ballot the right way. We do it in Florida. It works in Florida. Uh, we don't have sponsors so far on the Democrat side because they they're in for the federal government controlling elections. I mean, they're they're at, they're against voter ID. The most basic principle is you have to have an ID to vote. On top of that, why should our taxpayers be paying for elections? They should never be paying for attack ads. And if you if you don't have the Democrat support in S one, is they're not able to get that through. A lot of Republicans lacked confidence in the 2020 election. So how do you bring Republican confidence back in elections if nothing passes before 2022 or 2024? I think, it's, it, I think we've got to get the public to show up. And you've got to get them to call their senators and congressmen and women and say, you know, we expect election reform, and it's got to be in a, in a manner that, that we've, we're not going to be, our vote's not going to be diluted. Yes, sir. Uh, several, several of you alluded to the idea that this could be the bill that Democrats would choose to try to change the rules on a filibuster on. I'm just wondering if you could address that possibility directly and whether that increases pressure on you all to meet with Senator Manchin to figure out sort of what the, if there is some other path on this, it's not just they're going to blow up this rule if we don't come up with something. Sure. Well, I don't know what the Democrats are going to do with regard to the filibuster, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure the public knows. Uh, how bad this bill is. And this is, this is a bad bill. It's not what the public wants. It's not what Republicans, independent or Democrats want. And so what I'm gonna do every day is make sure people understand that the Democrats don't want you to have to show an ID to vote. They, want, they don't want you to have to register to vote ahead of time. They, don't, they want the federal government to pay for elections. So that's what I'm gonna do. Can I follow up on one specific thing you mentioned, this idea of same day registration? I, I've not heard anybody convincingly argue why you shouldn't be able to register to vote on the same day. I'll tell you why. You, 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 ought, to be able, you, you ought to be able to, um, you ought to be able to vet people to make sure that they, are, they have a right to vote and make sure they're a U.S. citizen, uh, make sure they live in your state, make sure that they're, they're voting in, the, in the, uh, the right area. 
Does Florida have the capacity to do that in a day? Uh, you'd have to ask the secretary to say, we don't do it that way. We, you have to register to vote, and you should have to register to vote. You should have to ask for your absentee ballot. Your signatures ought to match, and you have to, ought to have your voting on time. That's what we do in Florida. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks.